How fit are you? Are the weights that you're picking up average or above average or below average? Is how fast you're running average, below average, or above average? Today, you'll find out. Today, some of you guys are going to get a little bit of a gut check. Some of you guys are going to be maybe really proud of yourself. Some of you guys are going to maybe feel a little bit defeated, but that is not the purpose of today's episode. I'll tell you the purpose of today's episode is I had a recent conversation with one of my clients and I asked her the question, what do you wish you knew more about when it comes to health and fitness? She said this, I wish I knew more about what my strength goals actually should be. Like, what should an average person use when doing bicep curls? What should an average person use when doing dumbbell bench press? Like, am I at a good level or am I going too light or am I going really heavy? She just wishes she knew more about what a general level of fitness looks like. And I was like, you know what? That was really eye-opening to me because I think a lot of people feel that way. A lot of you guys probably have no idea whether the weights that you're picking up are average, above average, below average, or something you need to be doing, not doing. And so I wanted to do a two-part episode. This is part one. Part two will be next week on a total of eight different fitness standards to determine how fit you are. And today I'm going to go with the first four. And these standards are something that assess a well-rounded approach to fitness. And so of the eight standards, there's going to be two cardio standards, two upper body standards, two lower body standards, and two core standards. Now, are these all the standards that matter? No. I just wanted to give you a comprehensive review of how I view fitness in a relatively succinct way. Now, before listening, I really want you to make sure that you hear me out on a few different things. One, I'm going to talk about these in three ways, a baseline standard, an intermediate level, and an advanced level. Now, these are metrics for people who do have some experience with fitness. Let me say that again. These are metrics for people who do have some experience with fitness. If you have no experience, then these are probably not relevant to you, at least not yet. Also, if you're not able to hit any of these, are you a failure? No. Is there a specific science behind how I came up with these numbers? No. Will performance vary by age and by body size? Yes. But I came up with these standards because I simply wanted to be helpful and provide a simple frame of reference about how fit you are and maybe what your stepping stones should be with health and fitness. Okay, let's dive in. The first of the four fitness standards of part one is the one mile run. Now this is kind of a speed and cardio standard. So for males, the baseline is running a sub nine minute mile, intermediate sub 730, advanced sub six minutes. Females under 10 minutes, is the baseline. Intermediate is under 8.30. Advanced is under seven minutes. A one mile run is something a lot of us did back in grade school. It's really a good test of cardiovascular endurance and speed. When it comes to running overall for people who are really runners, a one mile run is comparatively pretty short, but it still requires cardiovascular endurance to perform well. Now, I chose a one mile run because I think that humans were born to run. Like I think man was born to run. I think Women were born to run, and I believe that cardiovascular health is just often determined by your heart's ability to efficiently move oxygen and move blood around the body. And the way that you can, one way that you can get stronger with your heart, like your heart will actually get stronger and actually get more efficient at moving blood throughout your body is by running and doing cardiovascular training. So that's one reason why the one mile run is one of my standards. If you improve your one mile run, you will improve the strength of your heart. Standard number two, dumbbell bench press for five reps. This is an upper body push strength exercise or standard. And so what I mean is for dumbbell bench press for five reps, I'm saying that the numbers that I'm about to call out, a male or a female would be able to grab that dumbbell in both hands. So you would have a set of dumbbells, one in each hand, and you would be able to do five reps with those sets of weights. So for males, baseline 40 pounds, intermediate 60 pounds, and advanced 80 pounds. 
Females, same thing. From baseline to advance is 15 pounds, 25 pounds, and 40 and 40 pounds. Now, I just want to let you know, this one is going to vary a lot based on your body size and your age. Obviously, if you're bigger, generally speaking, you should be able to lift more. And if you're older, generally speaking, maybe not quite as heavy. But this is a general recommendation regardless of what your body size is and maybe regardless of what your age is. So again, this is saying that an advanced male should be able to put an 80 pound dumbbell in each of his two hands and do five reps of a bench press. So why does a dumbbell bench press really important? Because it's such an all-inclusive upper body push exercise. It primarily is working your chest, your pectoralis muscles. It's also working your anterior deltoids, the front of your shoulders. It's also working the triceps, which is the back of your arms. So it's such a good all-inclusive upper body pushing exercise, and it's working a lot of different muscles. And it's pretty practical. Like There are a lot of different things that you do maybe on a daily basis or in real life that you would benefit from having upper body pushing strength. Something like moving furniture, like pushing a fridge, or if you need to push a car that's dead and you put it in neutral, then upper body push is important. Pushing a human in self-defense, or if you're just like on the ground, pushing yourself up off the ground. There's so many different reasons why upper body pushing strength is really critical, and the dumbbell bench press is the best standard that you can determine how strong you are from that perspective. Number three, the plank hold. This is a core endurance test. Core endurance, meaning like core strength is something that would not take that long. Core endurance is like, how long can you hold this thing? For males and females, the standard is the same. From inter intermediate or from baseline to intermediate to advanced, it's one minute, two and a half minutes, and a four minute plank hold. Now, why is a plank hold really important? Well, because it challenges your, the entirety of your core. So that is your abs, and your lower back muscles. It's also challenging a lot of other muscles as well because you're having to hold yourself up with your arms. So that hits a little shoulders and it's a little bit of triceps, hits a little bit of chest, hits a little bit of legs by holding your entire body up. So it's a good full body exercise, but in particular, obviously it's a core exercise. And what's the primary role of your core? It's to help us maintain posture and balance as we go throughout our day. So it's really important for our core muscles to have endurance so that we can live throughout our, our entire 16 waking hours of our day or maybe longer if you didn't have a great night's sleep. We need to rely on our core to have endurance so that we can have good posture and we can perform well and we can stay pain-free as well. Before diving into the four standard, I want to invite you to participate in one of our free offerings. You can participate in the virtual 10WT one-week free trial by going to nickcarrier.com slash free trial. Or if you're in Nashville, you can join a free 10WT class by going to nickcarrier.com slash free class. I'd love to work with you soon. The fourth and final standard for today, remember next week we'll come out with four more, is the dumbbell goblet squat for five reps. Now, this is a lower body strength exercise. This is putting one dumbbell in your hands, holding it up in front of you at shoulder height, and you can do five good squats with it. For males, from baseline to advanced, 60 pound dumbbell, an 80 pound dumbbell, and a 100 pound dumbbell. For females, from baseline to advanced, a 30 pound dumbbell, a 50 pound dumbbell, and a 70 pound dumbbell. Once again, this is going to vary a lot based on your body size and your age. But again, this is my general recommendation, kind of regardless of your body size and your age. This, once again, means an advanced fit male should be able to grab one. 100 pound dumbbell, hold it in front of their, their body at shoulder height and do five good squats with good form. Why is a dumb, dumbbell goblet squat one of my standards? Well, it's a great test of lower body strength. It also is actually a great test of core strength because you're having to hold the weight in front of your body. It's challenging your core to keep your body aligned with good posture. So it's also a core strength, but I really put it in there from a lower body strength perspective because in our everyday life, whether it's carrying groceries up some stairs, reaching down to pick up something heavy, carrying around heavy boxes, like there's so many real life scenarios that we would be so much better off with if we had good lower body strength. And that was just to name a few. The lower body is obviously the foundation for any kind of movement that we're doing. So the dumbbell goblet squat is absolutely critical to be able to have some baseline level of strength with. Now, the way I want to, the way I want to finish today is given what I just shared, what do you do with these numbers? Well, there's a couple of different things that you can do. You can approach it a couple of different ways. But before I dive into that, I just recommend having some level of awareness 
around where you're strong and where you're weak. And then you can take action in two different ways. Maybe you can pick where one of those standards where you're relatively weak and you can set a goal to improve it. Or you could pick one of the standards that you most desire to improve and you work on it. Like maybe there's a standard, maybe the dumbbell bench press, you're in the intermediate, but you want to be advanced. And so you set a goal to improve on that. Remember, the standards today have no relevancy to your self-worth. Your fitness performance doesn't dictate your self-worth, but it might dictate the quality of your life. Fitness is not just about looking a certain way, y'all. It's not even primarily about looking a certain way. It's about becoming a type of person who's fit. It's about becoming the type of person who is strong, has endurance, and is willing to push themselves out of their comfort zone to become an upgraded version of themselves. Now, if you're in the 10-week transformation and you're hearing this, if there is a specific one of those standards that you want to progress on, let me know and we can come up with a really good game plan on how to do that. If you're not in the 10-week transformation, then the next one starts January 22nd, 2024. Mark your calendar. Remember, this is part one, giving you the first four fitness standards. Next week, we'll give you the next four fitness standards in part two. But I hope it was informative. I hope you don't get down on yourself. I hope if you're intermediate or baseline or not at baseline yet, I hope you just see it as an opportunity to grow, as an opportunity to improve in the fitness area of your life. Don't get down on yourself if you're not where you wanna be on these standards yet. But I hope this was informative. I hope it allows you to gain clarity on maybe what fitness goals you should pursue next. And ultimately, I hope this allows you to get closer and closer to your best you.